In this video, I want to share with you 20 of my top tips for hiking the West Highland Way. It is a trail up in Scotland, starting from Mulgai near Glasgow, heading all the way up to Fort William and is 96 miles long. It usually takes people between five to nine days to complete. Now in this video, I'm specifically talking about tips for the West Highland Way, not your generic backpacking or hiking tips where I'm just gonna tell you to break in your boots, carry snacks, take waterproofs. We all know this, so let's just talk West Highland Way. If you do want a thorough discussion or see a video all about training for through hike, then I do have a video which I will put here for you if you want to check that out. But let's get started. So tip number one, is the walk suitable for me? Yes, it is suitable for, I would say, beginners that are new to backpacking. It is a very easy trail in the sense of it's not very technical and there's not a great deal of map reading skills required for this trail. Don't underestimate it, you do still need to be a relative fitness to do the trail, but yes, it is suitable for anybody with a good level of fitness. Number two, get into the start of the trail. It is so easy to find at the start of the trail. After you have jumped on a train from Glasgow to Mulgai, which takes only about 25 minutes, this sign faces you at the platform, telling you exactly where to go to the start. It's literally a couple of minutes walk. When you get to the start, there are also a number of places that you can even do your first resupply from, such as a Tesco, a co-op, as well as an MNS food. Which brings me on to tip number three. You do not need to carry a lot of food on this trail. There are plenty of places along the way to resupply. You're barely more than a couple of days away from food. I am gonna put a little list here for you so you can see where is good to resupply, which are the most popular places to get food from. Some of the campsites even offer little shops, but if you do have specific dietary requirements, you will be a little bit limited in these places unless you just wanna eat crisps or a few nuts and bars here and there. Also, some of the B&Bs and hostels will even make up some pack lunches for you. Tip number four, carry loose change. And that is specifically for honesty boxes that you find along the way where you can purchase little homemade cakes at stalls or drinks, flapjacks, crisps, things like that. Also take pound coins because the showers at campsites do require pound coins. You can't pay by card. <laughs> so make sure you carry change with you. Moving on to tip number five. Now, wild camping. I am a huge fan of wild camping. I love immersing myself in nature. I like getting away from the crowds and it just makes me feel more connected to the trail. So if you wanna do a bit of wild camping along the trail, which is specifically why I chose to do it, then you can wild camp nearly anywhere along the trail. However, between the 1st of March and the 30th of September, there is a camping management restriction zone along Loch Lomond, which requires a permit to be able to camp there. This is due to the environmental impact of so many people going to this trail and to this area. It starts in the Drimmon area, but on the West Highland Way, this will be when you reach Balmahar Forest Plantation, which is less than a mile from Connick Hill. It goes all the way north of Rewardenan, ending just above Tarmigan Lodge. If your schedule dictates that you're going to end up camping somewhere in that area, do not worry, you can still wild camp or at least have that wild camping experience. All you have to do is go online and get your permit and book a camp spot. The website is www.locklomond-trossachs.org. I will put that in the description box below for you. Once you're on the website, just go to the camping tab and then choose your camp spot, choose your dates in which you want to camp and pay four pounds, that's all it is, and that's your permit sorted for the evening. There is also an area just slightly north of Loch Lomond in River Fallock area, so just be aware of that, but there's not a great deal of people that I know of that camp in that area. Moving on to tip number six. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what to wear on your feet, whether you like trail runners, whether you like nice big hiking boots. If you wanna go barefoot, it's entirely up to you what you do. But just to let you know, a lot of the trail is gravel and that is incredibly uncomfortable on your feet. So whatever you choose to wear on your feet, make sure it's designed for comfort. So a lot of the boots and shoes you can get for certain specialities of hiking or running. So make sure you get one that's very, very comfortable because your feet will probably hurt no matter what by the end of the day. So the more comfortable the shoe, the nicer your feet will feel at the end of it. Tip number seven, if you are hiking between mid-May and September, make sure you carry some form of midge protection. They come out in force during that time. So carry a head net, carry repellent, put anything on that you can to stop them little blighters biting you. They come out in force and they are vicious. 
I was very lucky in the sense of I scheduled my trip specifically to avoid them. That is how nasty they are. So make sure you've got something. While we are on the subject of insects, don't forget about ticks. They can cause nasty diseases and illnesses. So make sure to carry a tick removal card or tweezers specifically for ticks and know how to get them out and check yourself every single day. If you don't want the burden of carrying heavy backpacks throughout your whole trip, look into baggage transfer service. Now, this is something that so many people were doing on the trail. And there was part of me that was thinking, yeah, that would be really nice. But personally, I like the freedom of being able to stop when I want, start when I want, and not be tied down to any schedules, which is why I didn't do it. But anyone else that does like to have a specific idea of where they want to stay each night, what they will do is they'll pick your bag up for you every single morning and deliver it to where you're staying every night so it's there waiting for you when you get there. And that isn't just hotels or B&Bs, it's even to campsites. They'll even collect it sometimes from the train station when you arrive. And the prices are actually quite reasonable. It's £45 currently for part of the trail or £65 for the whole trail. So not too much really when you think about the service that you're getting. Navigation on the trail is very straightforward. It is so simple. You barely need a map with you, but take one just in case because they are so useful for looking at the mountains around you, where your scenery is and what you're looking at and also how far along what Lomond you actually are in relation to the length of it. That is something I did use it for. But in all seriousness, I didn't check the trail more than five times because it is so well marked. All you have to do is follow the little symbol for the West Highland Way and you literally don't go wrong. Honestly, there was only a couple of intersections where I did actually double check it. I used for my backup the OS online map on my phone but also as a backup to that because it was electronic I also had my satellite phone which was my Garmin in reach. I have also used the Gut Hook app which I used on the Pacific Crest Trail which I now believe they've got one for the West Highland Way so if it's anything like the one I used in America then it'll be fantastic. It's very good because people can actually input data into that so you know what's coming up and you know what the water sources are like and things like that. Highly recommend those two. Halfway there, tip number 10. Do not underestimate how long it will take to walk alongside Loch Lomond. Honestly, whatever your normal pace is, it will take you twice as long. If you're thinking of doing 20 miles, think 10 miles because it does take a long time. There's lots of routes to clamber over. There's lots of sections you're using your hands to get up and down rocks and it is very slow going. So just take your time, make peace with it and enjoy the experience. The Scottish Highlands is one of the wettest parts in the UK, receiving over four metres of rainfall a year. So no matter what bag you've got, take a dry bag to put all your gear in that you want to keep dry inside your bag. And this is even if you have a waterproof cover for your bag. I saw so many people have their stuff absolutely drenched and that is with a waterproof cover that went over the top. Tip number 12. Now I know I said I wasn't going to go extremely generic and I'm not, but the West Highland Way can be extremely exposed in certain sections. So now is not the time to be totally ultra light and just take things like a poncho or some kind of inadequate waterproof coat. Take some proper waterproofs because it can get really cold. The weather can be fierce in sections and in certain places there is no shelter from the weather. And also on the rare occasion that it's going to be very sunny in Scotland, make sure to take some good sunscreen too. Tip number 13, carry a water filter. Even if you're not camping, it is a fantastic way of reducing weight as there is bountiful waterfalls and streams to collect from, but they aren't safe to drink directly from. So you do need a filter to keep safe and make sure you don't get ill. If you're planning on staying in accommodation, do it in advance. Do not expect there to be plenty of places or options along the way because they do get booked up well in advance along the trail. Throw in a couple of days of torrential rain and everyone will be looking for accommodation. So definitely book it in advance. Tip number 15. There are plenty of drying rooms in B&Bs, guest houses and hotels. So be sure to make use of them so that your boots and your clothes are all lovely and dry for the next morning. Tip number 16. You have probably heard about Conic Hill and the option to go up there instead of around it. I would highly recommend going up to the top of Conic Hill if the weather is good. Now, the first time I went up, the weather was good to start with and then changed before I got to the top. As you can see, you can't see a single thing, but I have seen so many people's pictures and video clips from up there and it looks fantastic. So this time round, I was planning on doing it. 
However, it was raining again, so there was no point, so I avoided it. But if you do get the chance, I'd definitely go up there. Tip number 17, be comfortable taking a pee outdoors. There are very few toilets or places to go along the way. There's plenty of discreet areas away from streams and lakes, but you do have to be comfortable when Mother Nature calls going outside. Once you have finished hiking this epic trail, it is very straightforward to get back to Glasgow if that's where you're heading for your onwards journeys. All you need to do is either go by bus or by train. Now by bus there's about three or four a day. It costs about £25 and all you have to do is go online and book it in advance. You do need to do that, you can't just turn up and pay on the bus, you're not guaranteed a seat or you can get the train, which I believe the scenery is absolutely spectacular, but it does cost a little bit more and funnily enough, takes a little bit longer. And tip number 19, please, 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 this is one of the most important ones, is make sure you take time to enjoy the trail. Don't just crunch the miles. Don't try and get it over and done with as quick as possible to prove how great you are at hiking or how fast you are. Trust me, you don't win by going fast. It is a fantastic trail and it's there to be enjoyed. Take time to stop and smell the roses, or in my case, a lot of wild garlic, if you're hiking in spring. And just stop and admire the scenery, the views, and just appreciate everything that's going on around you. Finally, do not forget to stop, turn around, and look behind you as you're hiking, because the scenery is so different once you've passed it and you're looking behind. There's some fantastic views to be had. Now, I hope you have enjoyed this video and that it's been helpful. If you haven't seen my journey along the West Highland Way, I will put the video there for you. And if you want to know what I took with me, it will be here. So take a look at those. But I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's helped and enjoy the West Highland Way if it's a trip that you're planning on doing soon. Goodbye.